Today we will be looking at how to convert from hexadecimal to binary IEEE 754 single precision float and into decimal. Right, so the first thing we want to do is convert this hexadecimal into binary. We can do this by using the fact that it's in base 16, which is 2 to the power of 4, which means each of these letters store 4 bits of information. So C is 12, 2 is 2, D is 13, 1 is 1, 8 is 8, and zeros are zeros. So converting this to binary, we have 1100, which is what 12, and 0010 for 2, 13 is 1101, 1 is 0001, 8 is 1000, 0 is 0000, and we have 8 more zeros, the remaining 2 zeros. Now, and this is our binary representation of the hexadecimal. From here, we have to figure out how to convert it to IEEE 754 single precision float. So, this first bit is the sign bit. The sign bit tells us whether or not the number is positive or negative. If it's a 0, it's a positive number. If it's a 1, it's a negative number. Simple enough. The next 8 bits are what we call the exponent. The exponent is how big the number is, which can be represented as 2 to the power of exponent minus the bias. The bias for an IEEE 754 single precision float is 127, which makes our exponent 2 to the power of exponent minus 127. And the remaining 23 bits is the mantissa. The mantissa is the value of the number. And now, in scientific notation, we have 4.392 times 10 to the 7. In, our, in 7 is the exponent, while 4.392 is our mantissa. In base 2, this First digit has to be a 1. IEEE 754 single precision float uses that fact and just hides that number and makes it implied, which means if we have our mantissa, our, the true mantissa of the number would be 1 point whatever the mantissa is. In our binary number, the first digit, the first bit is 1, so the sign is negative. And our exponent is 1000101. I missed a zero. Which is equal to 128 plus 4 plus 1, which is equal to 133. And we want a minus 127 from it, which is 6. Our mantissa is 1010011 with a couple of zeros after it, but we can ignore it because because it's after the decimal point. And don't forget the one point at the beginning. Now we have our sine, exponent, and mantissa. What we can do is instead of converting each part into decimal, we can simplify it and then we can convert to decimal. Now because our exponent is in base 2, what we can do is we can move this decimal point by the exponent 6 places from here, which my decimal point is now here. Which means we can ignore this exponent now because we already applied it. So our final number in binary is negative 1101000 point one one and now we can convert that into decimal which would be negative sixty four plus thirty two plus eight plus and now because it's after a decimal point we have fractional values of half plus a quarter which adds up to be negative a hundred and four point seven five and that's our final decimal number.
So, in our lesson, we learned how to convert from hexadecimal to binary IEEE 754 single precision float and to convert that into decimal.